hello everyone here a very good evening uh, in today's boot camp we'll be talking about meshing of a particular automotive component that is roof and the tool that we'll be using is ansa okay all right so welcome again to the webinar so we'll start with the table of contents uh, so we'll have a brief introduction to pdlc the product development life cycle followed by which we'll have uh, an introduction to CAE. We'll understand what is CAE, what is FEA, what is the significance and scope of CAE. Then uh, we'll look at the different applications of in CAE in various industries, how one can use FEA. And then we'll talk about meshing. What are the things that one has to follow during meshing? Then we'll have a software demo where we will uh, open answer and we'll open the roof model of a particular automotive car. And we'll see if we can mesh some components and understand uh, how things are done. Okay, so talking about product development life cycle. So any uh, engineer who is actually interested in FEA or uh, mechanical engineering or, or specifically into the uh, R&D department, one has to clearly understand what a product development life cycle is. So by the name suggests product development. So what is a product? Product is something that you know you see day day to day in the market that is being sold to satisfy the demands or needs of a customer. Right? For example, your phone, your laptops, your uh, shoes, your cars, your bikes. All these are products. Now, talking about all these products, how are they developed? So working with how these products are developed is what is product development life cycle. Now, to speak about development of products. Uh, the first and foremost thing to understand is that you'll need uh, something, right? So what is this something? This something is there should be a need for innovation. Right? If there is no need for innovation, there'll be no innovation, correct? For example, if we are going to buy a car, right? When you are planning to buy a car, what are the things that you look at? So you look at the aesthetic value of the car, how beautiful the car is, right? So then uh, you look at how much mileage my car is providing, what is the maintenance cost? Okay, is my car going to be affordable? Okay, so what climatic conditions I'm going to run my car at? Is it going to be suitable? So I'll be considering all these people. I'll be considering the demography, the geography, the lifestyle of how things are going to uh, be. And then I'll decide whether this is viable or not. Right. Similarly, when a product is actually developed, these conditions are also taken into consideration, uh, such as the demography, the geography, uh, and uh, the climatic conditions at which the product is going to be launched. Uh, and also the age, the lifestyle of the people who are going to buy and use your product is also going to be understood. Okay, now this is where you have the different stages of a product development life cycle, which starts with a market research, followed by brainstorming, followed by concept development, product development and detailing, simulation, physical testing, manufacturing and marketing. Okay, so when you talk about market research, market research is all about understanding what is existing in the market. Meaning if let's say I have an idea or I've found a need for developing a product. The first thing I'll do is I'll basically understand if there are existing products in the market. And if I launch my product, how competitive my product will be compared to the existing product. Right now, trying to understand this and accordingly coming up with a problem statement is what is all about market research. Then uh, the results of market research is actually taken into brainstorming where people sit down together and they brainstorm for ideas and uh, the respected, uh, you see the uh, problem statements and the respected ideas for them. Okay, once they get a set of ideas, they'll decide which idea is the best vi idea or the viable idea. And accordingly, they'll come up with the conclusion. Once the conclusion is done, a concept is developed. Okay, and then the next stage is concept development. During a concept, let's say I'm going to you know, work on a car or let's say I'm going to build a car, okay. So I'll do the brainstorming of how my car is going to be, what is it going to be, how people are going to use it and everything. Then I'll do a rough sketching of a car. Okay, like on a paper or using some uh, you know tools or softwares, I'll do a rough sketch of a car of how it is going to look like. And I'll try and understand whether this product that I have developed or this product that, that I've, uh, the concept that I've developed is actually meeting the uh, you know exact definition that we described during the problem statement stage or the market research stage. Now, once this is done, this concept that is developed is actually taken for detailing or the product development in detailing stage. 
where the entire product is actually designed and it is made ready for uh, different uh, purposes okay in this stage you will actually design the product you will assemble the product you will do all kinds of testing testing in the sense uh, design testing on the products followed by which you will give it to the simulation team okay the role of simulation team typically is to make sure that the design is uh, you know good or bad if the design is deemed good then the next stage will be physical testing if the design is deemed that it needs improvement then the product uh, the product team or the design team that the company has the simulation team will give ideas to them to try and optimize for a better solution okay once the simulation is done and the result of the simulation is taken care of the next would be physical testing wherein all the prototypes of the current model like the clay modeling and stuff are actually made and they are tested under various circumstances there might also be a physical prototype uh, not only the clay modeling and they might actually have some results now these results are actually compared with the simulation and we try and understand whether this is good or bad if they are deemed good then we go on for manufacturing where the car is manufactured and it is uh, assembled then you have marketing stage where the complete product is actually sold out and marketed for customer use okay this as you can see here is a very good example of a completed product that is available for manufacturing okay now speaking of the simulation part we saw about the simulation right so here in this lecture we'll be primarily looking into the simulation part and in simulation one has to understand about what is fea to understand about fea one has to understand what is ca okay the ca stands for computer aided engineering and in computer aided engineering basically we have techniques such as uh, nvh analysis we have fea we have cfd we we do structural analysis we do so many things okay so one such is what is fea and fea is actually a method where you have a physical model like for example in this case i have taken a ball or a sphere now this sphere is a physical model okay now this sphere is actually converted to a numerical technique meaning it is actually converted into a set of discretized uh, stage where you have it converted into an elements and nodes now these elements and nodes are actually analyzed to get approximate results okay please note the keywords here uh, which is you have a physical model and you want to convert this physical model into a numerical technique and for this you do discretizing into what into nodes and elements and the results that you get is approximate okay now there's always a question on okay so why do, should i actually convert a physical model into a numerical technique or a meshed component the answer is very simple if let's say i were to plot a certain number of points on this particular structure i would say that i would have infinite number of points and with infinite number of points i might have infinite number of equations because each point might have 6 degrees of freedom so infinite multiplied by 6 is going to give me infinite number of equations if i have infinite equations i may not be able to solve or any solver may not be able to solve so there has to be a way where you can convert this infinite continuous domain or your infinite you know continuous model into a discrete model with finite number of uh, nodes and equations okay this is why we plot a finite set of nodes and equations and each of these uh, finite entities basically as you can see here are you know commonly known as nodes and elements now these nodes are the nodes that lie or the characteristic points that lie on the circumference whereas the element is the one that we get by joining these characteristic points okay now uh, any method if you take up an engineering analysis one can solve it by using three methods generally first is experimental second is analytical third is numerical so speaking of experimental method we have physical testing and stuff like what we do is we take a model a prototype and we analyze it in real life to get the results okay this method is usually costlier compared to the other two methods because you will actually need a physical prototype and each time you get a poor result or a bad result you'll have to rework or optimize for a better solution rebuild the product and test again okay so you cannot work on multiple iterations so in a case of software simulation or stuff one can work with hundreds and thousands of iterations like hundreds and thousands of he can rerun the simulation according to uh, his choice according to the cost involved according to whatever parameters he or she is looking at but when you talk about experimental that is not possible one has to stick with a certain number of uh, steps or, or iterations 
to uh, you know adhere to the cost cap or the budget cap right the next is analytical results analytical results is all about working with formulas like for example if you have a cantilever beam or or let's say any component and you want to analyze it with mathematical formulas and equations so that is analytical method right for example finding out stress formulas load by area so finding out deflection formulas so if you want to talk about a particular cantilever beam then there might be some formulas there might be formula for stress strain deformation etc using these formulas and analyzing getting results is what is analytical method now one major disadvantage of this method is this method is actually limited to only simple problems complex problems such as cars and etc cannot be used because you may not be able to find uh, definite equations to uh, or formulas or theorems to solve these the next is numerical methods in numerical methods you typically have three other classification functional approximate method finite element finite difference so functional approximate method is one of the oldest methods that are used in uh, the numerical methods wherein they are categorized into variation and weighted residual this is the fundamental of uh, the entire numerical method as one has to understand clearly what is this in order to deep dive into the intricate concepts of how things work in the background but for now we'll be focusing on the finite element method as finite volume difference method is used in a different uh, domain which is cfd computational fluid dynamics okay so here we'll focus on finite element method finite element method is very related to fea which we saw in the previous slide and uh, yeah so fem is actually a method that is incorporated inside fea so speaking of steps or uh, the stages that are involved in fea you have four major steps but in textbook definition you might have only three the pre processing solving and post processing but i have also included physics as it is very important for a person to understand how the model is or uh, uh, what this is all about okay if i'm taking a car trying to understand how my car is going to run so or what are the loading conditions that my car is going to develop so what are the physics that are involved in the car how is it going to operate so understanding all these things is very very important now with this data that you have you can typically decide what type of analysis you are going to do or how you are going to uh, you know work on your uh, simulation further is what physics decides once the physics is done the next stage is pre processing wherein you will be ha having a component and you'll you'll typically be meshing meaning you'll you'll have a physical model you'll discretize your model into finite number of uh, elements and entities right so that is pre processing okay some tools that are commonly used for pre processing in the industry or ansa and hypermesh okay ansa hypermesh are very very widely used because of their user friendly uh, you know geo graphic user interface okay so one such pre processing tool is what is ansa and that is exactly what uh, we'll be looking at so how do you pre process or how do you mesh a particular component that is going to be analyzed using ansa right then you have your solution solution is where you take your pre processed model to a stage where you put a boundary conditions you apply uh, materials you apply properties you do the case setup and you solve for all the problems that you need for example if you want to find out the deformation or the stress or the strain or the whatever it is we'll try and find out you in the solution stage once the solution is done the next stage is analyzing the results meaning after getting the results you have to understand whether this is good or bad whether this can be optimized or not whether this can be uh, viable or not whether this is safe or not you'll understand all these things you will plot graphs contours etc and document all the results okay in this module uh, in the fea steps we'll be primarily focusing on the pre processing wherein we'll typically see how one can work on the meshing part okay now significance of fecc the idea is that when you work on uh, analytical method or an experimental method getting the physical response at any location might not be possible meaning if let's say i am to work on a particular cantilever beam okay and if i want to find out the stresses at the end of the cantilever beam or at the fixed end of the cantilever beam that might actually be possible using analytical method but the same if i want to draw put a cut section or a you know cross section and i want to find out what is happening to the solid inside or on my cross section that might not be possible using your uh, analytical method so it is important that you have a method where you can do this so that is the first significance of cae where you can find the physical response at any location next is with cae you can actually predict the destructive or impractical loading conditions meaning you can work with all the failure modes 
okay in, when you talk about analytical approach you might get accurate results but the point is the results that you get you may not be sure if that is uh, you know good or bad if that is destructive or not if that is going to incorporate or indulge in failure or not you will not be able to understand but when you talk about ca you will be able to visually see what's happening right similarly yeah the next point is visual representation correct so visual representation of wide variety of parameters you can see stress you can see stain you can see temperature you can also see how your uh, component is actually uh, components performance is actually improving according to your optimization and all possible modifications can be easily uh, be visible okay and the most of all is uh, ca is a very relatively low investment and has a high calculation com uh, rapid calculation rate comparing to analytical and uh, the numerical method okay so then uh, analytical and the experimental method sorry yeah then you have uh, the commonly used types in ca you have fea cft thermal we discussed about this right now speaking of applications uh, you can use applications in various industries like you can use it in mold flow simulations you can use it for forming simulations in manufacturing industries you can use it for automotive industries like for example you can do frontal crash simulations you can do uh, you know frequency response analysis on chassis you can use it in aircraft industries to work on structure analysis so in in general the, there can be classification of uh, the industries into 14 different types like for example uh, aerospace industry automobile industry okay then oil and gas industry precision type industry so you have manufacturing industry you have 14 different types of industry okay in each of the industry wherever uh, you have um, analysis involved wherever structure analysis is involved fea or ca can also be involved okay like for example when you talk about electronic industry you might think that okay what am i going to do in fea or ca using on my phones or laptops now if you carefully notice there are some tests such as drop tests okay bending tests impact tests that are done on your phone to uh, to make sure that your phone satisfies a certain criteria okay uh, so every uh, product that you see in market has a certain benchmark value that uh, they have to uh, usually satisfy these benchmark values are set by a certain parameter or a body and this body gives you the setting conditions on how, what your component has to satisfy now, when you talk about any product uh, any you know branded product or any product that is used for uh, daily use you will be able to see that they might actually have satisfied a certain level of quality criteria okay like for example your phone okay your phone is dropped from a certain height uh, according to the criteria uh, like it is dropped on all four cor eight corners on all edges on flat screen on back side and then it is uh, you know tested and once it is deemed tested then they'll start manufacturing in in, in depth and then they'll provide uh, products similarly when you talk about cars you have a frontal crust test side crust test roof crust test there are so many tests that are done to understand whether it is safe or not similarly the same is the case for the every 14 type of industry that i told you okay now let's just imagine that these testings are all done in only r and d sector but each of these industries also has uh, other sectors as well like the r and d the manufacturing the service sector everything okay now let's have a quick look at meshing when we talk about meshing meshing is all about uh, you know having or reducing the degrees of freedom from an infinite to a finite structure okay one of the major purpose of meshing is to actually make your model solvable because if you have an infinite structure you may not be able to solve it using um, the general set of equations because uh, you might actually you know have not in, you may not have infinite time to solve it right? so since you have infinite equations it is practically not possible then uh, by meshing you break up your domain into pieces and each piece actually represents an element so when you decide a mesh there are generally three uh, factors that decide what or how your mesh can be chosen okay these three factors are codependent or they are interdependent meaning you cannot only take one factor and consider that okay this is going to be my mesh type you will have to take all three types consider carefully and then accordingly decide okay the first is the size and shape of the model meaning if you have complex simple complex geometries you'll go for uh, tri or hexa type elements uh, then if you have uh, simpler geometry you can go for uh, sorry if you have complex geometry you can go for tri or tetra elements if you have simpler geometry you can go for quad or hexa elements now this again depends on another parameter that is time the third parameter is time we'll discuss that then uh, you have based on analysis you can decide uh, how it is going to be for structural fatigue we'll use quad elements 
for casting components we'll use two elements for crash and nonlinears we'll use mixed elements so in this in this particular bootcamp we'll be focusing on how do you mesh for crash and nonlinear analysis where we'll be using mix, mixed type elements for meshing okay then the most important part is uh, ttm the time taken for manufacturing or time taken for your project to complete okay so if sufficient time is available one can use with manual meshing to get more accurate results and uh, manual meshing hex elements if insufficient time is available one can go with automatic meshing with tetra elements which will give you definitely less accurate results okay now if let's say i have sufficient time available and let's say my model is very complex then i would not actually go with hexa type instead i would actually go with try out tetra because my component is very complex i may not be able to do hexa mesh okay there are certain conditions on uh, what one can do when okay so if you have a simple geometry but then the type of analysis you are going to use is going to be casting then no matter what you will have to only use try out type elements right so these conditions you know it might be a bit confusing to understand now a tricky to understand now but anyway by the passage of time once you have things in practice you will understand what is what okay a significance of meshing so everyone will always have an understanding of what is meshing but why actually do we need to mesh uh, there are multiple factors one we already know that we have to convert our infinite domain to a finite domain next is your mesh influences your accuracy uh, the speed of the simulation right so your mesh the number of mesh you have has a direct role on the time the higher the number of mesh elements and nodes the higher will be the simulation time higher will be the simulation time higher will be the cost similarly vice versa if lower the number of elements obviously lower will be the time taken but there will be lower cost involved also and the accuracy will also be lower okay so one has to always find a balance between all of these things time you have to balance between cost you have to balance between the accuracy and the number of uh, elements and nodes okay and then uh, meshing is actually a very continuous uh, approach meaning you'll break down your domain into a set of thousands or more types of elements and each of these will actually represent a shape of the object okay so it is very important that the mesh that you deploy gives you the exact shape like as you can see here is a formula 1 car or a you know race car and you can see that there's an um, there's a animal that is here okay if you had to mesh it the output of the mesh should actually exactly look like what you are expected to provide or deliver okay so simply put a good quality mesh equals precise results a poor quality mesh can result in uh, convergence difficulties the better your mesh is the good the more better your good your mesh is you can provide precise and accurate results accurately i mean accurate in the sense not exactly accurate accurate to how approximate you can get okay so talking about the answer tool so for this meshing as we already discussed we'll be working on the tool called ansa so speaking of ansa tool ansa is automatic net generation for structure analysis right so a n s a so that's what the full form of ansa is automatic net generation for structural analysis and ansa is a tool that is developed by a company called beta ca systems and this tool is generally used in the industries specifically to work on plastic and sheet metal components okay this can be used for both structural fea or cfd analysis okay now this tool uh, is used for a lot of things like you have set different stages in pre processing like for example topology cleanup then you extract mid surfacing then you do meshing then you improve your mesh then you assign thickness and then you prepare your solver deck and uh, go on with etc okay now uh, whenever you are using the tool one has to always understand about what is this particular plastic component or what is the sheet metal component uh, how am i going to use this and stuff the sheet metal parts are usually the exterior parts or the metal parts that are made in your automotives any any or any any product and the plastic parts are the interior parts or the soft parts that are made um, to uh, you know make things in a different style okay so when you talk about automotives mostly the interior parts are all plastics the exterior parts are all sheet metals like for example uh, you have your uh, body in white the bw components like your side door your back door your roof right so your floor panels your uh, shotguns your rails your a pillars your bumpers you have so many components that are made of uh, your sheet metal similarly when you talk about the inside you have all your switch panels you have your uh, you know obliques you have your b pillars you have your a pillar inside trim parts okay you have your dashboard you have your uh, side door panels you have 
where you open and close that latch where you keep your water bottles right so they're all made of plastics okay so uh, again working with sheet metal components and plastic components is going to be entirely different and the approach approach might be same but uh, the result end product or uh, the things that you consider might be little different okay speaking of the different phases and answer you have uh, so basically you take the geometry the first step is uh, you know having a cat geometry then uh, doing a clean up for the cat geometry clean up in the sense once you actually import a cat model it is important that you actually clean it up meaning there might be some errors that or there might be some issues with your geometry that it might not suit for your analysis because when you do a design and then when you transfer the design as a step or an igs or a what you know conversion file and then you import it into a component there's a lot of chance that during the conversion some data is lost now because of this data being lost uh, there's a lot of uh, understanding or uh, you know has to be made or uh, you know the concept is that your geometry might or may or may not actually distort or damage so it is important that you check them okay and if there are any damage that exists one has to work on that then once it, that that phase is geometry clean up once the geometry clean up is done the next is uh, mid surfacing now mid surfacing is a concept where you have a particular geometry and you decide whether to go with a mid surfacing or not usually for a components which has thickness less than 6 mm are uh, mid surface for components that are having thickness more than 6 mm are not mid surfaced uh, they are actually used directly as solid parts and 3d meshing is employed similarly when you talk about mid surfacing 2d meshing is actually employed like shell mesh or, uh, you know shell mesh such as 2d mesh or sorry uh, quad mesh or tri mesh when you talk about solids we saw types of mesh right so hexa tetra those are all solid mesh then you have element checks so after meshing it is important that you check for quality right uh, what quality you will check whether the mesh is good or bad whether it is going to adhere to all the rules or etc and then accordingly you will do mesh improvement then you will apply loading conditions boundary conditions and finally you will export the file once the file is exported it is put into a solver like uh, such as radios lsn and aston etc and uh, furthermore uh, you know case setup is done and then analysis is done once the analysis is done next stage is where you analyze the results meaning uh, i mean you simulate and after simulation you analyze the result you'll understand how good or bad the result is okay so in this stage we'll be covering till the uh, quality check and mesh improvement part um, and uh, first let us understand some more parameters before we deep dive into the software let us understand more about the uh, software answer gui and then the quality checks okay so this is your answer gui we'll be deep diving into the software part so here you have various panels such as uh, yeah you have your tool panels on the top so you have your uh, uh, i mean this is your tools panels okay then you have this uh, uh, you, you, you before, ahead of this or above this you'll have your title bar then you have your menu bar then you'll have your main tool bar this is your database bar okay then this is your graphical user interface these are all your uh, module buttons and these are all your modules each module will have different module buttons one can operate with okay then this is where you import your component and work with then you have uh, different types of cons so whenever one is actually working on with so there are different types of cons uh, that are important so these cons represent how a surface is in answer like you have single cons double cons and triple cons only three types of cons okay single cons actually represent the free edges or uh, you know surfaces with uh, no edges connected like as you can see here this is a surface where you can see a red color con meaning this edge or these three edges of this particular surface doesn't have any other surface connected to it in that way you'll have single con and if there are at, if there are at most two surfaces that are connected to one edge then there will be double cons which will be in yellow color and if there are you know three or more surfaces that are joined along one edge then it will be blue in color which are called as triple cons okay just to summarize single cons are surfaces uh, with or uh, edges on in the surfaces that have no attached geometry further double cons are you know edges with two surfaces attached triple cons are two or more or three and uh, four and etc okay so single cons are represented in red double cons are represented in yellow 
triple coins are represented in blue in answer okay then uh, what is topology cleanup so we already saw this right so whenever you have a geometry consisting of lines surfaces etc and we have a CAD model. It is important that you repair and work with uh, the model to make it up ready for matching process. Like as you can see on the left side, you have so many free edges here, right? So or single cons here. So these single cons cannot be like this, right? Because as you can see in this location, there is one surface, and this yellow color surface also there. Again, a gray color surface is there. So if you are going to actually do a cleanup, you'll know that this is going to be a double con since there are two surfaces at each at least attached, hence two surfaces, it has to be yellow in color. Similarly, it is the same for every other surface. And right after you do the cleanup, you are able to see that everything is uh, neat and clean. Right. Not only this, you'll also identify all the uh, you know issues or repairs that you have in the model and uh, you will work on them. Okay. Now, um, we'll primarily discuss about uh, 2D meshing. So when we see about 2D meshing, one of the important understand uh, understanding that one has to make is to see if you have you're going to do 2D meshing or 3D meshing, and we'll have to also understand about the difference between 2D meshing and 3D meshing. So when you talk about 2D meshing, okay, generally uh, when we speak of meshing types, you can do 1D, 2D, and 3D meshing. So when you talk about 1D meshing, you basically do uh, represent an entire model as a 1D. Like for example, if you have a bar or a beam or a rod you'll understand that, okay, this cannot be exactly done as a 2D or a 3D since you don't need that many variables. So you can simply represent as a line element and you can do it as a 1D. Okay, but obviously there are some limitations as you cannot represent every type of geometry with 1D elements. Hence, you'll have to go with 2D or 3D. When you talk about 2D or 3D, there are some advantages to 2D, there are some advantages to 3D, there are some disadvantages to 2D, there are some disadvantages to 3D. Okay. Typically in industries, any component that has thickness less than 6 mm um, is actually used for 2D meshing, meaning if you have a solid, a mid surface is extracted and a 2D mesh or a quad or a tri mesh or a mixed mesh is actually deployed. And any component that has thickness that are greater than 6 mm, they are 3D meshed, meaning tetra meshed or hexa meshed. Okay. Now the complexity with tetra mesh and hexa mesh is tetra mesh is actually a full tri mesh. A full tri mesh will actually not give you very precise results. It will, uh, you know, always show some deviation from the quad or the hexa mesh. And when you talk about hexa meshing in 3D, hexa meshing is one of the most difficult types of meshing when you talk about uh, the pre processing. Okay. Because it takes years and years of experience to practice and work with the model. Uh, because you have to deploy an entire quad mesh without uh, a lot of errors throughout the model. And this is not possible for all the models. This is only possible to a very certain amount of models that are sweepable or mappable. Okay, so hence 3D meshing is actually quite time consuming and it, it, it might see that, seem that it is costlier. Okay, whereas when you talk about 2D meshing, all you have to do is take a 2D and then use 2D or 3D, uh, sorry, 2D mesh types such as quad or triad, and you can typically do this. Okay, let's understand uh, the results that we get using a simple problem with 2D and 3D. So here we have taken a cantilever beam and this cantilever beam is having a certain length, breadth and thickness. And what we are doing is we are applying a particular load of 100 kilonewtons on this uh, on this end free end of the cantilever beam. Now we'll mesh this in 2D and in 3D and we'll compare the results. So when you talk about the results, as you can see for 2D elements, you have 250 element count. For 3D, we have 500 element count. The deformation that we have got is 0 0.3362, whereas the 3D we have got is 0 0.3352, considering that we have used tetra mesh. Okay, the stress that we have got is uh, 6.65 megapascals, whereas in 3D we have 69.18 megapascals. And time is for this simple simulation alone with 2D elements, it took us three seconds and here four seconds. Right, which means that this is actually giving us roughly 25% faster time when we are compared to 3D elements. Right. Obviously, we cannot talk about the exact accuracy of the problem uh, because we don't have the analytical or the experimental research to compare it with. Okay, if you have a solid validation plan that, okay, this is exactly my stress values or strain values when I do it in real life, or the uh, cantilever beam problem can be analyzed using analytical method, right? Once I get it, if I understand that, okay, this is how it is, then I can compare and see which is accurate. But for now, let's just compare about the time consuming and the number of nodes and elements. And imagine the time that is going to 
be involved for you to actually match the 500 elements and 250 elements also. Okay, so it's conclusion. Whenever you have a component that is having thickness less than six mm, the most important parameter to understand is that it is better to go with 2D meshing than to go with 3D meshing. There are other complexities as well, but for now this is the important point that we'll cover. Okay, so speaking of mid surfacing. Uh, one can use multiple methods in answer. Like for example, he can go with manual method or automatic method. In manual method, you have offset option, middle option. In automatic, you can use skin option or casting option or etc. Uh, for this lecture, when we open into the software, we'll try and understand uh, so how uh, the model is, what it can be operated with, and con considering time constraints and other stuff, we'll decide what method to use. I may not be teaching you all the methods. We'll be only specifically looking at a particular method. Okay. Now, speaking of stages, the first is we already saw that we have solving the errors. Then we'll do extracting of mesh, mesh surfacing and meshing according to the quality criteria. Then we'll mesh and thickness assignment will be done. Okay. So this is a very simple example of uh, uh, 2D mesh with quality criteria. So as you can see, you have a solid geometry. And with this solid geometry, one has done a uh, meshing, a 2D meshing, and he has represented this 2D mesh in, in a form of 3D, meaning you assign thickness, and by thickness, you can always represent your 2D uh, quantities as a you know representation of a 3D, not exactly 3D, but you can represent it like that. Okay, although the uh, results may not be calculated along the thickness, it will be only calculated along the integration points on the element, but you might not be able to find results along the thickness part. Okay. Similarly, as you can see, uh, this is the thickness that is assigned, right? So yeah, the geometry is only thin. Now, once you assign thickness, you will be able to see that uh, this, so this red color line is typical uh, understanding that you can make that that is where your 2D mesh is done. And the outside part is where you have your geometry. Now, once if you look at carefully after the uh, thickness is provided, this is how it looks like. Okay. Speaking of types of elements, you have 1D, 2D, 3D special type elements. Uh, so 1D elements, rod, beam, bar, etc. You we already discussed 2D, we have triac, quad, 3D, we have tetra, hexa. Special type elements like gap elements and spring elements and mass elements also exist. But uh, yeah, we'll be discussing that uh, sometime later if time permits. Okay. So whenever one meshing when one works on meshing, it is important to do quality checks. Okay, so what is quality checks? So quality checks are a certain set of parameters that are actually used to understand whether the mesh that is being deployed is good or bad according to accurate results with lower lowest processing time. Okay, some examples of quality checks are warp angle, skewness, aspect ratio, minimum length, maximum length, uh, and a lot more. But uh, let's understand a few of the parameters. Speaking of aspect ratio, aspect ratio is actually the ratio of your minimum length to your maximum length, meaning if let's say you have a particular quad element. Now this is a quad element. And if all the sides of a quad element are one, then the aspect ratio will be one because minimum length of this quad is one. The maximum length is also one. Hence the aspect ratio will be one, which is uh, also what is called as an ideal element. Okay, failed element or a non-ideal element uh, would be an element that is not having uh, the aspect ratio within a certain range. Like let's say, in a particular uh, analysis, I'm taking the aspect ratio of my component to be, let's say, three. Okay, anything greater than three, let's say I say it failed. Now, let's say I have this particular element where I have one, one, two, and 0.5. So if I do the aspect ratio calculation, it will be two by 0.5. The maximum length is two and minimum length is 0.5. So if I do two by 0.5, I'll get four, which is actually failing considering my criteria, right? Similarly, when you talk about the next parameter that is skewness, so Aspect ratio is all about uh, the ratio of how much length you can have corresponding to the smallest length. Whereas skewness is all about how much tilt your uh, uh, mesh or your element can have. Okay, so it is calculated by using theta minus uh, 90 minus theta min, sorry. And as you can see for a quad, ideal value or ideal element, uh, you will have right angles and hence the skewness value is always zero. Okay, but for a deviated element or a distorted element, the value will be greater than zero, less than 90. So uh, here I have a quad element where I have 180, 45, 135. And as you can see, 9, 45 is the smallest angle. So 90 minus 45 is going to give me 45. 
for this particular distorted element. The skewness for a tri element is also calculated in a different way. Again, the same angles are what is calculated, but the only difference is that it has to be calculated along every node. So meaning from this node to opposite side, it is actually calculated. Then again, this particular node to opposite side, then this particular node to opposite side, the uh, skewness is calculated and whichever is highest is actually taken for consideration. Okay, the next parameter is warp edge. Warp edge is actually how element your, uh, I mean, how uh, your element is deviating from your ideal, uh, uh, you know, plane that is developed in. Okay, let's say you have a particular quad that is there. This particular quad will have multiple planes. Okay, minimum of two planes. Uh, two planes, minimum and maximum of two planes at a certain point. But if you consider carefully, there might be four planes, but two can only consider be at once. Okay. So let's say one, three, two is a plane and two, three, four is a plane in, in this image. Okay. So if this particular uh, four that is highlighted in black color, as you can see, if one of this particular four, this black node uh, is actually moved out of plane, then you might form an angle between the plane number one and two. Now this angle, the bent angle of a particular normal is what is warp angle, meaning the angle between two planes in one element that is warp edge. Okay. Similarly, you have Jacobian. Jacobian is again, how much element, how much your uh, element is deviating from its ideal elements. Here. Okay. Every element will have its own natural coordinate system. And it is important to understand. Uh, so if you want to get a direct solution, you will have to convert this natural into a global system. And if you want to understand uh, how much deviation is actually happening during this conversion and or because of the deviation that is warp edge. sorry, that is Jacobian. Okay. The ideal value of Jacobian for a perfect cube is one, whereas for a uh, non ideal element, it would be less than one. Okay. Let's have quick software demo. Let me share my screen in a minute. As you can see, this is my answer and I'll use answer for this particular parameter. I'll do some performance modes. So that I have the best possible uh, results for my component. Okay. So we'll wait for answer to open. And now my software has opened, right? So what we'll do is we'll understand the GUI, the controls, and then we'll immediately get into the details. Okay. So what I've done is I've shown labels so that we can deep dive and understand uh, what is what. Okay. So here, this is answer here. You have your title bar. Then you have your uh, menu bar. Then you have all these toolbars that are there. This is your uh, buttons manager where you can have all these buttons. And these are all your modules, uh, module buttons, you can call it. And this is all your modules. Okay. You have topo module, you have shell module, you have solver module. You have a lot of different models that are available in answer. Okay. Maybe I'll do a full screen so that we can have a better understanding. Okay, then uh, so in in this particular answer module, we have different solvers like Nastron, Ansys, uh, Abacus, Palm Crash, LSTN, etc. Please note that Ansys and Ansa are not the same. Ansys is actually a solver, whereas Ansa is actually a preprocessor. Okay, now as you can see, there are different files. The recent only open files that are visible here. So what we are going to work with is the roof component with some of the pillars, and uh, defaultly Ansa will open save as dot answer file and we'll import dot stp okay talking about the controls and answer let me first open this roof panel the stp file is the cat file now when i open this cat file answer will take some time to load and in this module we'll be working with uh, the top top module the shell module and we'll also be working with some of the uh, commonly used tools here, like for example, uh, the uh, logic gates. Okay. So we'll be working with uh, different modes of visibility. We'll be working with uh, different, uh, you know, 
uh, entities here like property uh, material and stuff we'll be doing some checks manager we'll use the checks manager to do some checks all these things so speaking of the controls you'll need a mouse and a keyboard to work on answer usual laptop uh, touchpad won't work because uh, scrolling and uh, panning and rotating would be quite difficult okay so when we speak about your uh, controls so typically you can customize controls in answer but the default controls that are there is control plus left or right is used for rotating if you use rotate uh, if you rotate about a particular axis it is uh, control left mouse and normal access to the corresponding axis is control right click then control middle mouse crawl is zoom in zoom out then control plus uh, your uh, middle mouse hold and hover is actually your uh, actually your panning okay so this is the most important part of it this is your graphical user interface okay and uh, yeah my model has also opened okay so for now i'll switch off my perim or perimeters so i'll be using some technical terms here like the cons okay so cons we already saw we'll be discussing about perimeters we'll be discussing about macros and stuff so perimeters macros uh, we don't have to confuse too much these edges if you see that are going to be meshed it can also be called as perimeters okay uh, and uh, yeah so here is how it is so if i want to rotate i'll use control and left click and this is how the rotation will happen control and right click is how my component is going to rotate in the alternate uh, axis zoom in zoom out control and scroll bar pan is control uh, the middle mouse if you hold and hover it will move okay now this is my component so there are some keyboard shortcuts as well that you can use for example f4 will set your model in particular view f5 in in the front view f6 in the side view similarly f7 will zoom in f8 will zoom out okay f9 will fit your model to any screen so if let's say i have zoomed in this much and i don't want to zoom out or, or i'm lost i can just press f9 that will bring my model back to fit screen view okay similarly you have uh, other modes as well but uh, so we already saw this right so these are all the cons so you have all these green color cons okay to understand this let's uh, move to you have different modes like part mode uh, so you have uh, include you have mid you have pid you have entity etc okay if let's say i go to topo module the moment i go to topo module my uh, component get got changed into colors like you can see all these things in yellow color right if let's say i were to delete a part of this particular surface okay so what i'll do is from here i'll go to delete option and let's say i select this particular face and i press middle mouse and then okay now as you can see your cons or your edges has turned red which means that there is no surface that is actually connecting here okay i'll undo this because we'll be working on these anyway just to show you i had to represent okay and this on the top corner is your axis you have three axis you have x axis y axis and z axis most of the software x axis represented in red color y is represented in green and z in blue okay you can always customize all your operations in ansa like for example what i'm going to do now is i'm going to decrease the sensitivity of the sensitivity of my scroll wheel as uh, uh, it would be you know not really great if i keep scrolling zooming and zooming out a lot okay so i'll reduce the amount of scrolling sensitivity so that my component doesn't zoom in zoom out very suddenly and i'm not lost okay maybe i'll keep it to 10 or 15 okay then you can also always manipulate your uh, mouse settings like if you want rotation along a different axis like left or right you can always set up according to however it is convenient to you okay similarly you can also customize your uh, keyboard shortcuts and keyboard arrows also if you go to buttons manager here will be able to see shortcuts that are assigned okay because when you go to soft uh, when you go to the industry one of the most important things that one will actually do is set up keyboard shortcuts because keyboard shortcuts is what is going to save time if let's say i have to go to this particular option called uh, cons so what i have to do i have to move my mouse 
to go to cons and then i have to work on this or let's say if there is a setting which is inside surfaces so what i'll have to do i have to go to this click on this arrow and then use this get it out let's say this sorry let's say i'll get this out why is it not coming out yeah if i right click it will come out okay so uh, yeah it's coming out now and then i'll have to use it or I'll, i'll have to use it from here only so it might take some time for me to work right? but if let's say i assign a particular shortcut for my cut or new or any of the objects i can easily uh, work with things right now speaking of this particular module this topper module is where you have all these options like hot points cons faces surfaces curves points and auxiliaries so hot points are actually points that are actually there on your uh, model okay so these kind of uh, so these kind of points that you can see can or what be called as points the pink color ones and there is also one more thing that is the white color ones that you might see after you extract mid surface so these are all uh, examples of hot points okay now you can remove uh, or insert or project or you can work with different hot points from this buttons panel then you have cons cons are your edges right if you have to work with any of the cons like paste or release or project or uh, anything you can you'll have to work with the cons faces is a particular part of your uh, you know multiple surfaces joined together not all the surfaces uh, but some surfaces joined together can be called as one face or let's say of a, a particular set of geometry along a particular axis can be called as a face in general term editing or working with faces is what is your faces command then surfaces is individual surfaces what you want to do with this curves is actually construction lines that you want to uh, work with when if you want to edit or create recreate or work with something then points are entities very similar to hot points so points these points are actually the ones that are actually there uh, that connect your cons and lines okay similarly other auxiliaries are there when you talk about shell let's say i go to different types here you have different types of mesh like middle mesh class shell mesh classic mesh so also as of now go with classic mesh in classic mesh also you will be able to see most of the points that are repeating like for example hot points and stuff but here there will be other things like perimeter so perimeters is this here if you want to mesh this component you'll have to set up this perimeters meaning you'll have to tell the software okay at what frequency my mesh elements will be working with that uh, is what is perimeters then macros is your you know you will understand macros when i use one so the mesh that i deploy afterwards uh, can be called as macros individual elements form macros you can you know think of it like that okay similarly this is grids that i have mesh generation is how i'll generate mesh shell mesh is to work along with mesh generation to improve or rework on the elements or do something else okay so we'll be using some tools not all the tools some tools in topo and uh, in the mesh module only the classic mesh module and we'll be using some uh, entities such as your property ids and the checks manager and we might also use some uh, tools here so these are boolean operations that you can see so or and not and i not are the four common boolean operations that are available in ansa so or operation let's say if i click on or and i click on a particular surface what will happen is uh the on, the surface that i clicked on or the face that i clicked on only that particular entity will be isolated rest everything else will be hidden if you want to bring back all you click on all okay and operation what it will do is whatever you select okay and operation to exist i'll have to hide one of the surface let's say i do an or from or if i select and whatever is adjacent to or or whatever is adjacent to the corresponding surface i select that will actually become visible when i do an and operation meaning like adjacent okay that is kind of and not is like whatever i don't want i can select and it will be hidden okay remember these are not deleting or anything these are just actually hidden or masked okay not operation here will hide entities whereas i not is actually a combination of uh, Uh, two two or more operations so what it will do is if i click on i not the first operation that will happen is it will hide my geometry or a not operation will be performed and once i perform not operation and then i put uh, the middle mouse 
what will happen is the or operation will carry on or basically the inverse will happen. Okay, so whatever I used I not for and then I press middle mouse, whatever I masked, that will be reversed and everything else will be hidden. So that is what is I not. So we'll be using I not a lot. Uh, let's have a look into it. As you can see here, the white color entities, these are all the hot points. So if, when you move to mesh mode only, you are able to see these white color points that are hot points. Okay. Uh, yeah. So speaking of this particular, uh, let me put it to top view and let me switch off the params so that we don't have too much to worry about. Right. So this is your car. So if you look at the side view, you can see that there are multiple things. Okay. So this is your uh, pillar. So this is your pillar. This is your pillar. This is your pillar. This is your pillar. This is called as an A pillar. This is your B pillar. And this is where your C pillar or D pillar might be. Okay. Depending on if it, your car is a six seater car or a uh, four seater car or five seater car or uh, accordingly, you'll have different number of pillars. Okay. Now between these pillars is where you will have your, uh, uh, your uh, class, uh, you know, your windows and you'll have your doors that are there. These pillars provide structural support. Okay. So this is your roof. And uh, if you flip this, you might have some structures to support your roofs, such as your roof bows and etc. Okay. And uh, all these are roof bows. So this all parts that support are all examples of roof bows. And this particular component will have some plastic components on the inside, like your headliner and then a cloth fabric material that when you sit inside a car and touch your roof, you'll be able to feel a fabric that have fabric uh, behind that fabric is what you have your headliner. And, and, and you know, all these components from the top, you will be able to only see uh, this part. Only this part, but anyway, so this is the interior part. Of it. Okay, similarly, this pillar is only the sheet metal part. Okay, there are a lot of other parts also. So from the interiors, you'll have a lot more parts like the trim parts, and then you'll have covers and then a fabric. And uh, on the exteriors also, you might have some uh, other casings and coverings also. Okay, depending on the aesthetic values. Okay, now, uh, so right when I imported the model inspection, I did understood what the model is, how the physics is going to work. Then the next stage would actually be to do the geometry cleanup. So when I look at the geometry cleanup, so I'll use something which is called as text manager. So on the top, I can see that there is a text manager here. I'll click on this and do text manager. And this text manager option will actually tell me what I need to do. Okay. So if I want to do abacus checks or Nastron checks or anything. So here I want to only do uh, a geometrical check. So what I'll do, I'll open checks manager and I'll go to geometry checks geometry. So this text manager uh, pop-up window will open and it'll ask me what I want to do. Okay. So if I do execute, what will happen is it will show me all the errors uh, that your model can have. Okay. If there are any single cons, double cons, everything that you can see will actually be visible here when you do this. Okay. You can also look at the results if there are any errors. Since there are no typical RSM model, I don't have to worry about uh, further things. I can directly move on to the next step, which is trying to figure out if I need mid surface or not. Okay. So here, if let's say uh, I was switch on my perimeters of points to help measure. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll have, I have an option called measure. This option is measure with measure. I can measure anything that I want. So for example, I can measure nodes or edges or shell or cons or any entities. If I do it in dynamic, whatever I select accordingly, it will give me results. So here, let's say I take this particular component. Now, if I try and understand the thickness actually here is uh, 1.5. Okay. Now this database stores all these information. If I click, I click on store, actually, as you can see, there are multiple properties. One material is assigned. And uh, you have multiple geometries. So how many curves, how many cons, sorry, how many cons, how many curves, how many faces, how many hot points you have, everything is actually uh, the data is visible here. Okay. Now if I do store, uh, it will actually store my measurement here. I can actually choose to see the measurement whenever I want to. Okay. Anyway, if I press escape, I'll escape from that operation. 
then similarly each component might have a different thickness like for example uh, previously it was 1.5 now it is 0 0.75 and uh, different components might have different thickness but ultimately for sheet metal these are all sheet metal components most of these sheet metal components would actually have thickness within your uh, 6 mm range okay so now what we'll do is we'll start to extract mid surface and we'll try and do meshing Okay, so what we'll do is we'll start with these boss. So I'll open the property uh, manager or properties bar. And what I'll do is I have multiple bow rows. So if you are not aware of the exact nomenclature, you can always use an I not operation. So if let's say I want to only isolate uh, these, some of these bows. And so what I can do, I can select using the PID region and select one, two, and three operation and then press inverse and that way I'll be able to isolate my component alone. Okay. Now, uh, if I put this in a particular axis, let's say in, in the in the bottom view or whatever it is, I can see that my component is actually symmetric along X axis. For a machine engineer or for a, uh, you know, typical mechanical engineer who's working on these kind of softwares, the best way to save time is to find out whether you can, you know, have things in symmetry. If things are in symmetry, the work actually that you do is reduced into half. Okay. So now, uh, since I've had this, the first step I'll do is I'll extract mid surface for mid surface extraction. What I'll do, I'll go to faces in the topo module. And here I have a button called mid surface in mid surface. If I click and hold left mouse. I'll be able to see an option called skin. Now this skin option is actually an automatic mid surface extraction option that will help me extraction of mid surface. Okay. So I'll do skin and I'll select control A. Control A is basically whatever visible, or you can do a box select. Box select is shift plus left click. Box unselect is shift plus right click. Okay. You can see that the color of the box is also changing. If I do a box shift left click, the color is red color. Whereas if I do shift right click, the color is uh, blue color. Okay. So once I uh, select this object, I can typically press middle mouse. That way it will highlight one by one. So this, it is highlighting two surfaces and it is asking me which surface I want to extract mid surface. So I selected one and it has already found out the, the thickness. And if I click on offset, the mid surface has already offset it. Okay, so before this, I'll have to do one more thing, which is when I work on the skin, I'll have to do some changes here in the settings. Okay, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to not or delete my original entities. Okay, similarly, when I talk about properties, I'll have to use uh, yeah auto create so that it can create automatic thickness. Okay, now this is done. I'll do Control A and then press Enter. First part, I'll select offset second part i'll accept offset and then third part also you can offset okay now as you can see I have my parent component and a red color line in the middle. Okay, so I'll go to property IDs and I'll be able to isolate my mid surface. So all these parts with at skin at skin are my mid surface. Okay, I think I only have two entities. Uh, three is there, but then uh, let's yeah, first three is what is there. So I'll hide all the others. If I click on this bulb icon, things will hide, and I'll only have my mid surface that will be visible. Okay. Now, once I have my method face, I'll actually have to do some cleanup here also. Like the first thing I might do is I might actually set up perimeters in perimeters. I'll do length. This length option will give me an idea on what my element length is going to be. Since I'm going to use a mixed type mesh, I'll use five mm as a mesh size. And I'll work on the perimeters. Okay. 
Now, once the perimeter is done, I'll have to delete all the unnecessary hot points. Okay, so yeah, I'll go to hot point delete and I'll just do a box select. That way, I'll be able to remove most of the unnecessary hot points in my model. Because hot points influence how my mesh is going to be there. So I'll actually delete my hot points. Okay, then the next thing I'll do is since this component is symmetric, I'll go to delete and I can, uh, sorry, I'll go to delete and I'll typically delete one half of my component because I'll any, I can anyway do a symmetric or a symmetry option or a mirror option later after I mesh it. Okay, now since this is done, I can actually start with meshing of one part by one part. Okay, so for this part, uh, I'll have to also set up my quality criteria. So what I'll do, I'll go to this quality panel and I'll switch on aspect ratio to be, let's say, five. Skewness to be 45, industry recommended standards. Warp page, let's say I'll keep it in 15. And uh, then minimum maximum height, let's say I'll put it to two and I'll put it to eight. Then I'll switch on angles and uh, yeah, Jacobin also will put to 0.7. Okay, then we'll apply. We'll also see how your uh, details is. So we'll keep it in more details so that we have some good representation. Okay, now since this is done, the next thing I'll have to do is mesh. For meshing, I'll have to go to the mesh module and start working with uh, mesh generation. So here I have different mesh, mesh things such as spot mesh, pre-mesh, okay, advanced friends. I have so many things. What I'll do is I'll simply go with any one. Let's say I'll go with free mesh. So I'll start with meshing this. I'll do a box select here and I'll press middle mouse and I'll be able to see that I have a mesh that is generated. But obviously this mesh is not very good because of some topological issues. Okay, so the next thing I'll have to do is find out all these small surfaces or small lines that are there because if I measure this, I'm able to see that the distance is only 0.29, which is not very good. So what I have to do is I have to remove these cuts and then mesh it. Okay, so for this, what I can do, I can use this topology option and go to cut and left click will enable do to left click will put a cut and a right click will uh, disable your cut so, or uh, hide or suppress your cut. Okay, so here till here it is cut, then I'll go back to uh, this cut again. And I'll do a right click, right click will, uh, you know, join. Similarly, I do it for this and I'll check if anything else is there. No, only two are there. Now then I'll rotate a little bit and do a, a suppress cut here. Now, once this is done, so I do have uh, a perimeter that is marked there. Okay, since this is done, I'll have to mark my perimeters again because my mesh might actually have an influence on my perimeters. I'll go to perimeters length. I'll deploy the same 5mm uh, perimeters and then I'll click OK. Now perimeters, perimeters are set. Now again, I can mesh. So I'll go to free mesh or spot mesh, any issues, select mesh. Now once this is meshed, if I go to hidden mode, I'll be able to see that there are some, uh, some parameters that are failing. Like for example, this is failing for length. Okay, so what I'll have to do, I'll have to basically remesh and the flow is also not good. As you can see, there are too many errors in my geometry. Okay, so this also might uh, deem fatal because of some issues. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to mesh my remesh or rework on my component again, this particular component. Okay, so I'll also do uh, hide these geometries also. So, not okay it's in mesh that's why it's not happening so i'll go to not and i'll hide this and then i'll press f9 that way it will be in fit screen i'll lock this view also okay now um, so i have this or i'll do one thing instead of locking this view i'll lock this view so that if I press all, 
only my lock view will be used not all the surface with the geometry uh, the parent geometry okay so i'll have to rework on this mesh so what i'll do i'll do a re remesh i'll do a box select remesh select do a box select and remesh if remesh doesn't work so what i can do i can enable some other options like reconstruct and uh, reshape fix quality uh, smooth etc so reconstruct visible i can select how i want my mesh to be and now i can see that the quality of some elements have reduced sorry improved okay but anyway there are some triads that are there so these triads should be handled very carefully when you are doing mesh okay so since i'm not able to remove this triad i can simply change the number of elements or i can use the split option to actually split this particular element and then combine this then i can easily do a smooth operation that will give me a good mesh sorry i'll have to tick okay so now i have a good mesh here i have a decent mesh here but i have some trouble with ties so what i can do i can simply join this so i'll do a split operation using a box select not all only this and then i'll right click to join i have to also swap this center because i cannot have triads on the corners similarly i'll join this and i'll keep doing the same for all the regions so right click right click swap join join swap then i'll swap okay i have to join this no swap this swap this this is already swapped i'll have to join this Okay, there are some quality elements that are failing some elements that are failing for quality but uh, anyway we'll come back to fix them using smooth so this and this is combined now i'll swap this i'll swap this swap this this might look like a complicated process but once you get used to it you will be able to understand that this is very important in doing okay similarly i'll push this and uh, yeah so that's the last part now since this is done for this entire part it hardly took me 10 minutes right to work on this now once this is done i can accept and i can start smoothing my component so i'll do a smooth visible and now my component is smooth with no elements failing for quality okay now once this is meshed what i can do is i can simply decide to transform this particular operations transforming or mirror okay so transform operation is here in this bar so if i right click on this i'll be able to see what bar this is, this is utilities bar so the first operation that is visible is utilities like 
whatever you see this is analysis tools okay this is assembly right then this is what this is faces draw so you'll be the first operation that is visible you'll be able to see that uh, above this line is what is the name of that particular uh, toolbar so here from the utility bar what i'll need is i'll need an operation called transform now this transform i'll do a copy because i want an entire copy of this mesh to be on the opposite side okay so i'll select the entire number of nodes and what i'll do is i'll perform a symmetry operation and i'll select default symmetry plane and click okay and now i'm able to see that the entire path that i deleted is here with the exact mesh that i deployed on this side correct so this i think i missed it it should not be here it should be in the center similarly on the other side also that should be the case no okay yeah i think only these two are opposite so this is everything else is good okay, i can simply oh i did not accept it i'll have to redo it i think so transform okay let me first uh, smooth this yes now i'll do a transform again transform copy select the entity middle mouse symmetry apply okay apply finish now once you do finish only it will be clearly visible right so this is done now similarly i can decide to mesh my other components as well if i do all i'll have this so this i think it should not have any a lot more issues i I'll, i'll be able to do it in one shot okay so i have this now then i can easily do a reconstruct i'll improve and uh, there you go i think i've got a decent mesh here without elements really for quality except for uh, these two triangular elements okay so i think i'll have to rework on this to see if their tri triangular elements are vanishing if not i can anyway rerun but for now what i can simply do is i can just split and uh, move this out once it is done i'll have to smooth it select smooth okay so once i've smoothed it i can see that it is done i can now also perform a transform operation here utilities transform copy select these entities middle mouse default symmetry plane apply okay finish okay similarly i can also mesh this but for now uh, so i'll not be working too much again on the tries so i'll quickly see the fastest way to work on this tries okay so i'll do a reconstruct once it reconstructed and again i can see that the same way as how it was previously i have some tries so what i can do i can decide to see or do some remesh by selecting some of the some of the elements okay now one got removed but then let me move this to the top so i'll do some remesh i think i did remesh on visible so there's a lot of chance that this might actually distort yeah it's not okay so here i'll do a reconstruct again
okay so now i have some tries here okay which are possibly because of which of a okay poor geometric enough so i think now i'll have to uh, delete my mesh because there are some geometrical issues that i just saw so what i can do i can simply go to this elements delete and select and delete my elements and uh, i'll have to do some join operation here that's probably some of the reason why i had multiple tries so this looks good this Okay, my, now if I do changes, I'll have to again remember to do a change in perimeters. Once it is done, I can uh, go with spot mesh or free mesh or however it feels fit. Then I can do a reconstruct. Mm, my mesh has improved by a lot of margin. I'll have to only work with uh, some of these tries. Split shells. I'll split this. Join this. This is good. So, but I'll have to split this and join this. Let's see if I can smooth this. To see if these are going away because this is actually highlighting for minimum length. If it is failing for minimum length, then I'll have to leave these tries as it is. I cannot join them. Okay, so let's do some smooth here. To see if the mesh is bettering. Yeah, it is fixed. I think I can work with them. So I'll quickly do a split on all these areas. I'll do swap, 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 join. Join, join, swap and swap. Then we'll do a join here. Join, join, this I can remove. How do I remove? I go to paste, select these two and then click OK. Then go back to split. So this, swap, this, swap, swap, this also swap. This I can remove. So I'll have to use paste. Okay, similarly, I'll have to do it on the other side also. Let me quickly do it for you. So swap. So this I can swap it on this side. And I can remove it in this manner. Or I can simply use this and reconstruct the mesh here. Okay, I think it would be better to actually remove this.
okay now that i've done i can actually go on and smooth once smooth is done the next thing would be to transform so i'll go to transform copy select this copy apply and i'll have my surface okay i think i did not finish so copy again select this middle mouse apply finish now let me save my file okay so yeah so i've had a good mesh here now what i'll do is i'll remove this lock i'll unlock this all operations and let me move on to one more quick component so here the next component i'll work on is this stop part let's say i'll reflect this right after roof off i'll work on this so here we'll have to again generate a mid surface by using skin select this okay then offset 30.375 and once it is done i should have my mid surface now i can see that i have a decent mid surface all so this part i'll hide or simply i'll do all i can collect or work with things on the pid so roof outer skin alone i'll show only so i'll have this now i'll have to check for geometry so here i have some small surfaces i'll have to cut it so what i'll do i'll use cut or join here that way i can select a loop so that i can select multiple entities at once okay i think this is joined so i'll i'll join here i can also remove this cut mm and yeah these issues i'll have to fix hmm. now this part is good now similarly i can do it on these parts also like toggle these toggle these top part this part zoom in to check issues zoom in to check issues no issues now this i'll keep this Okay, I think this entire part center is not there, so I can simply decide to toggle this. Anyway, decide deciding this would be a matter of trying to do a feature capturing or not. But here, I'll not capture as this itself is a very small entity. Okay, so I'll only work on one side since uh, my component is symmetric, and since this is my mid surface. i can always uh, delete my one half of the mid surface so that i can reflect or mirror and work yes so i have deleted it i have to also check on uh, other regions so here also i have some issues so this part here you have a very small edge here you have a very small edge but you'll have to capture your geometry properly so since i have to capture my geometry in a proper way without my elements failing for quality i have to sacrifice some of my features right but obviously i'll get a decent capturing but anyway 
so what i'll do i'll do a join operation and do a box here and i'll only unselect the or maybe i'll do an undo once to join i'll do a box select and i'll unselect only this outside part since i've used loop i think it should select one all in one shot now i have this okay similarly i'll have to also check in other regions so no errors so far here on this end my geometry also i think there are uh, the components are quite decent now i'll try and remove my hot points unnecessary then i'll set perimeters length select give 5 okay and now i can mesh the free mesh if i do a mesh for this so previously you do not have too many elements the uh, roof bows that you saw had only small number of elements but this since it's an entire component i can see that there are 43000 elements that are generated uh 43700 elements that are generated on this component and there are a lot of off elements also okay to work on off elements the first approach simply would be to do a reconstruct reconstruct what is visible and let's see if this off numbers is coming down from 300 roughly 300 to some other dump okay so there are also other some parameters that one has to keep in mind very importantly uh, when he or she is messing like for example where can i have trash where can i not have trash these small uh, elements that you can see which are triangular in shape or what are tri elements and the others are all what are called quad elements so whenever you have a component that you are meshing for a structure analysis like the crash worthiness or non linear parts and you use a mixed type mesh you have to make sure that there are some conditions like for example you cannot have any trash that are touching each other okay trash cannot be on the fillets trash cannot be on the cons okay the trash cannot be opposite so there are some conditions okay now i can see that uh, so i so when i do meshing i'll have to also see for trash that are on the issues and at the same time try and fix for quality also so here i have my elements that are only five elements that are filling so what i'll do here is i'll try and reduce this number to 4 because i have to always maintain an even number of nodes and this is actually not quite decent so what i'll also do is i'll use an operation called slide okay if you are not sure of any operation where it is or how it is you can always use this help operation it's in perimeter slide it will definitely show you since it is hidden i was not able to see it but now can you see it's highlighting okay so i'll click on this but uh, so i'll have to remove my odd points first if there are any okay then i can decide to slide okay since i have a hot point i think uh, i'm not able to remove my hot point also i think probably because of a geometrical issue okay but anyway let's see if it is marked they are not marked if it were to be marked it would be in green in color but yeah moment you mark you are able to see that there are hot points that are generated but let's see if this is sliding now uh, now it's sliding see so what i have to make sure is i have to make sure that this component is no oh, sorry this particular hole is exactly parallel to my nearest edge okay that's the way you get the best mesh now i have this similarly i'll try and understand where else my quality is failing or off elements are there only those parts i had six roughly five six elements that were failing 
rest of the parts i think it's uh, all decent except for the uh, try elements <clears throat> which we'll fix quickly but for now let's just try and reconstruct this particular area okay so show old so what we'll do is since we've had this we'll do a marking here so that my elements don't change okay now i'll do a reconstruct so that these don't change okay now can you see they are maintaining but not changing okay i think i don't have any off elements except for this part where i have some trash so i can always I'll align or orient my geometry in a particular view. And then I'll just, since it's a long distance, I'll have to resort to do selecting a box select. The swap, combine, combine. Get okay, this try, I can simply paste. So go to paste, move it away from the edge, paste and sorry i have to paste this with this and this with this this with this so now i have this and this also i cannot have it on the edge so i'll have to keep it somewhere in the middle okay then do a smooth Okay, so there are, sorry. Tick. There are no off elements. The mess is not very great, but it's actually decent. Okay, this also I can probably remove, but for now I'm going to leave it as it is, since we know that we'll have to fix them. Okay, there are four more uh, off elements, meaning uh, some elements that are failing for quality. Let's try and understand where they are. So these elements, I'll, I'll not, I'm not going to rework on them as it might take some more time, but we know what to do, right? So we'll have to make sure that these tires are, uh, you know, these tires that are converging are okay, one or two, but this tire cannot be here. So maybe I'll move this little bit up. This tire is not okay but anyway i'll have to move this like this and then combine so i'll not do it now so let me smooth it yes only four elements are not uh, adhering to quality criteria that is i think because of this so what we'll do we'll do the join cut that we mesh will actually uh, remesh on its own okay then this part also i can actually remove same here very small features that i am not interested in Okay, instead of uh, okay, I think everything came back. So I'll do a redo operation and only join these. This try I can paste. Then later I'll smooth it. This part, uh, what I'll do, I'll just remove.
I'll only keep one. This is exactly where my elements are filling. We can reconstruct this anyway. This, this you'll need. Join. Yeah, now it's good. Okay, I can also see that there is only one element that is failing, but we are not sure where it is. So what we can do, we can just double click on this and press F7 or right click show. And I'm not able to see anything, which means that it's a very small surface. So what I'll do is I'll go to delete operation and press control A that is visible and delete. So now I have the small part that is there is unmeshed so i'll press all and then only isolate this part okay i think this is the part that is not meshed because of the elements that were failing, I can simply do a free mesh on this. Yeah, now they're not failing. And since it is done, I can do a reconstruct here because there were some issues that I can improve my mesh. You have to also check if this is again changing because I made a certain change here, right? Okay, so we are almost there. Yeah, I think we are good. Okay, so we don't have any off elements. I think uh, we do not have to worry too much about the trash also. And uh, the only part that is remaining is to actually transform this. Right, so tools transform copy, sorry, utilities transform copy, select this, use default symmetry plane symmetry, apply OK, and finish. Okay, so now we have got the entire model meshed. So as you can see, only for this part, I have 86,000, almost 87,000 nodes, okay, which is a very simple part. So I have some issues here, which I can eventually try and uh, paste it. Like for example, I can go to paste auto and uh, I can work on a particular notes, let's say within a distance of 0.5, what I can do, I can try and paste, which should paste, but it did not work. So I'll try with again visible. Project on geometry. And uh, yeah, I'll try and paste. Still not pasting, which means that I'll have to paste things manually. Paste node pairs. Let's say I'll do COG. Okay, probably because of the. Let's try this. I think there is some issue in the surface and the mesh because of which you are not able to join them. So what you can also do is you can uh, join and modify faces. But anyway, so we'll not be resolving this for now. Okay, we'll, what we'll have to do is we'll have to join these two together that way the mesh will be destroyed here and then we'll have to reconstruct the mesh 
so yeah so we'll we'll try and resolve it using some other way in a different time but for now i think everything else is good right just to give a quick summary of what we discussed so we started with uh, the fea part i right, said so we understood about uh, first we understood about what is the product development life cycle we saw about uh, what is a product what is development the different stages in product development life cycle okay then uh, we had a quick look at what is ea the different techniques what is fea then met different methods engineering analysis followed by which we deeply understood about the meshing concepts the quality criteria uh, how ansa works and then we have this roof model where we tried meshing it okay for the last stage i think uh, so once this is done what i'll have to understand is once i have a meshed model ready what i have to do uh, for at least these parts since i'm not going to mesh the entire part uh, so this working on this for one hour is actually uh, quite a long time for this particular part uh, you see meshing in typical industry would hardly take them like 20 minutes or 30 minutes 20 minutes would be the benchmark time for whatever part we have missed okay but since we were having lot of issues and we were also teaching so it might have been delayed but anyway so that's the benchmark time one can follow okay now this is done so we'll see if the thickness is assigned so if i double click on this i can see that there is a yeah sorry uh, so this thickness is assigned corresponding to the respective thickness i have the corresponding to the component that i extracted the respective thickness is assigned okay and if let's say i want to view my thickness part so here you can only view it in this this right so if i want to do it i can go to mesh or i can go to quality then presentation parameters i can do draw cell as solid so if i do draw cell as solid apply an okay as you can see compared to what we had previously we are able to see that my mesh is actually represented in 3d form maybe i'll do this again so i'll switch off draw cell as solid apply okay now i don't have a thickness that is assigned but if i want a thickness uh, one second maybe we'll paste this the paste not on cog last node select this yes if i want to view this in the thickness part what i can do is i can go to quality and in quality i have an option called draw cell as solid which will show my component in solid mode okay so this model once you do it you can release this mesh and you can save it as a fi uh, file like that can be imported into a naston deck and you can do also some tests such as roof crash analysis and uh, uh, you see some other test on this component if you want to but anyway you'll have to also mesh the other parts to understand better but yeah this is the fundamental of how one can work on meshing okay now things to remember is when you are trying to mesh you have to make sure to capture all the features at most uh, pos at at most possible then you have to work on the mesh flow which is having on working with trias then third important part is what is quality criteria the quality criteria quality parameters okay so yeah so we'll put a hard stop to the lecture here open to questions now any technical question that you can see or uh, yeah that you have you can put up in the chat box i'll be happy to answer them all right uh, so great uh, hari haran thanks a lot uh, you know for uh, spending you know two hours uh, uh, with us and uh, delivering the wonderful workshop uh, hope uh, everyone you know took away some or the other thing today uh, with them so uh, in the meantime uh, if you have any uh, you know technical queries uh, feel free to drop in the chat box i will take those up uh but those who are not having any questions and um, you know uh, uh have asked about the certificate and all so i am rolling out the feedback form now right so you guys can fill up the feedback form uh and make sure you are providing the correct details so that we can mail you the certificate in 14 working days okay so 
i'm i'm rolling out the feedback form but another 15 minutes we will be spending in uh, uh, understanding the career opportunities and what uh, opportunities you know are going to pop up uh, in coming two decades in india uh, because of initiatives taken uh, by the government of india uh, we will be uh, taking a look uh, at those uh, areas so that everyone gets the clarity about the opportunities available in the market and going to pop up right so uh, those who are interested in that uh, you know 15 minute session uh, feel free to stay back rest all if you are having other commitments uh, feel free to drop off uh, technical session is done okay now we will take up the questions and also take up uh, career counseling session okay uh, but i'll be rolling out the feedback form so make sure uh, you know if you are not attending the another 15 minutes uh, you are filling up the feedback form so that you can receive the certificate in 14 working days okay so here is the feedback form guys in the chat box you guys can uh, check out right so fill up the feedback form in order to receive the certificate all right um great so another thing which i wanted to share uh, with you guys uh, you know is uh, let me share my screen here okay so hi i hope you are able to see my screen um earlier if you can yes on. yes it's clear <clears throat> awesome all right guys so these are the four initiatives uh, uh, which government of india uh, you know um, is taking right uh, across all the engineering domains right uh, first is covid uh, and china plus one uh, right the second is uh, pli all right production linked incentives then gati shakti plan <clears throat> right um, because of which uh, there will be a lot of opportunities in the civil and mechanical domain right ev revolution right a lot of opportunities for um, electronics uh, embedded electrical right entire circuit branch right a lot of uh, opportunities are going to uh, pop up okay um, so what are these uh, you know china plus 1 um, and and uh, or, or or alternate c plus 1 is like uh, if you basically take a look right uh, during the covid times okay um the entire uh, supply chain was broken guys right so the reason was because entire world was dependent on china uh, you know for the production correct um because the entire manufacturing production everything uh, is you know uh, was done right uh, in china uh, and uh, if you have observed right when you ordered any laptop okay or if you have basically placed an order for a a uh, car right it might have come you know after 7 8 months 9 months right so that was the waiting period because of uh, this issue right so now uh, the world has realized like hey uh, depending only on china is not a good idea right uh, we should have alternative uh, manufacturing hubs right and india is the second you know uh, largest manufacturing hub uh, you know is what we are aiming uh, towards okay and that's why you can see a lot of companies like uh, apple uh, oneplus right um, these are the companies actually investing in india and and coming up with the manufacturing hub uh, the reason is first is we have english speaking demography right uh, and number of engineering graduates in india like every year you can see lot of engineering um, you know uh, folks are you know getting graduated from engineering college right so because of these two reason right as i said right english being the business language it's very important for us to uh, communicate in english understand what other person is telling you right and speak uh, in english uh, in such a way that you are able to deliver right what do you want to basically ask them to work for you okay so <clears throat> if someone is here telling speaking in hindi then you have to fix this problem okay uh, because not only in india but across the globe now wherever you go right you have to stick to the business language because that's the common language everywhere right so make sure that if you are struggling somewhere uh, you know uh, in understanding uh, english or speaking english um you you basically you know join some class and get that fixed okay because uh, no one is expecting you to speak sophisticated words or high five vocabulary and all this stuff right basic simple language if you are able to speak and deliver and understand the things more than sufficient okay so these are these are the two major reasons why india is uh, you know getting chosen 
for the manufacturing hub okay and that's why there are a lot of opportunities which are going to come in in coming two decades and that's why we are saying that hey apple in itself suppliers renault nissan one plus right if you can see uh, you you should actually read these articles okay uh, today you know uh, after this session you guys should go and actually read about these four initiatives and see who all are investing in india right you can see apple uh, you know investing 700 million dollars right uh, renault nissan 600 million dollars right so these are the things you should basically be aware of uh, and because that will improve your perspective towards looking at the opportunities in india right when when people say right that uh, civil is having you know very less opportunities mechanical is having very less opportunities right go to data science go to ev because those are buzzwords nowadays correct but that is not the fact right the reason why mechanical folks or civil engineers are not getting the job because they are not having the relevant skill set which can you know get them a technical core job in the good uh, top tech giants okay so now uh, you know uh, government is coming up with a lot of you know uh, incentives uh, you know for the for, for the for the things to get manufactured in india right and uh, you will basically see uh, immense growth right uh, because of this pli schemes okay then mobile manufacturing right if you basically see uh, but in 2014 right we were the major importer okay of mobile phones but by 2020 97 percentage of the mobile phones were manufactured in india right now because of the manufacturing hub right uh, going to come like in iphone uh, apple is going to invest in india uh, by 2025 it is you know uh pro being projected like every fourth iphone will be made in india right so what does that mean uh for us for, as an engineers what does that mean it means that there will be a lot of job in opportunities uh like manufacturing design engineer ic integration engineer ui ux engineer uh right system design engineer rf design engineer etc okay so <clears throat> you can basically uh, also see about the semicond semiconductor manufacturing right um, and and uh, it's uh, you know implementation uh, in india will improve the r d and design capabilities right reduce import dependencies right um, compete with other bases in asia okay so the thing is the next area which needs to be focused is defense okay uh, we again like mobiles we were the major importer of def defense equipments okay um and then with the uh you know uh initiatives of atmanirbhar bharat right self-reliance uh, india initiative uh we we are exporting uh, right now the defense equipment to 75 countries in the world right before we were in the major importer okay so what does that mean like hey uh there there are a lot of opportunities are going to come for mechanical engineers right for for structural engineers right um because if you if you if you want to come up with the manufacturing of any component you have to design it then you have to basically do the structural uh, uh testing analysis right then you have to if needed you have to do the cfd analysis as well right so for that we need engineers uh right uh who can basically work on these uh kind of projects and and you know uh deliver the uh you know project on time with uh, you know uh accuracy right so then another initiative is Gadi Shakti plan, right? So, so if you want to become a, a you know largest manufacturing hub, right? It's very important that uh, connectivity is really good, right? Infrastructure is really good, okay? So that's why if you are staying in any metro city, right? You will see there is uh, everywhere uh, construction going on to expand the roads, right? To uh, build the metros, right? and and uh, you know construction of over 200 new airports right uh increasing uh, railway transport cargo by 1600 tons by 2025 right so all these things means what you know uh, bridges uh metros means civil engineering right um then then basically this will improve the infrastructure and major cost is into it right if you if you are not having a good connectivity between two states or cities right it is very hard right to basically uh make india as a manufacturing hub 
okay and that this is what the gati shakti plan is all about right um uh, railways roads highways uh, right telecom right uh, whatever is required will be implemented through this initiative right and this means there are plethora of opportunities going to bump up across all the engineering domains name it right all the engineering domains right design engineer structural engineer construction engineer bm modeler right geotechnical engineer steel i don't know how many of you are from civil because today's workshop was based on mechanical so so but these are the you know uh, job rules which will which civil engineers uh, and uh, you know other engineering domains uh, so far we have seen will be able to see okay ev revolution everyone is aware of you know ev right uh, and it's a buzzword uh, nowadays right uh, data science and ev data science and ev okay so the thing is you know ev market is going to grow uh, uh, right by another you know uh, sorry already grew by 200% right in by 2022 right and then another uh, important thing which we recently uh, we have found is lithium ores found in jammu and kashmir okay and in uh, ev uh, you know uh, we use lithium ion batteries correct <clears throat> so next step is to mine process and start producing batteries in india okay um because uh, that lithium ion battery we are you know as of now importing right so now if we start manufacturing we start producing batteries in india uh, right uh, the second phase of the fame scheme is in action right now and will be uh, with an allocated budget of you know 10000 crores now what is fame scheme you guys can go and you know read about it uh, in depth right will not basically go and uh, dive deep there but it is basically all about ev revolution right it means there will be a lot of opportunities in the ev sector for you know electrical folks el embedded folks electronics and the circuit branch okay in EV space, again, the say, uh, you know, uh, I'll just quickly go through it. Uh, you, you guys just have a quick, you know, um, uh, you know, just just left to right, just take a look. Okay. Um, so, so the thing is, uh, why I am showing you all these things and giving you the overview? Because a lot of people are having the misconception that we, you know, there are recession is going on. Okay. There are a lot of uh, opportunities, um, you know, um, what we say. There are no, uh, in other words, if I have to put this, there are no much opportunities for engineers in India. Okay. So just to let you know, with all these four or five initiatives, which I, which we have discussed today, uh, with the help of this coming two decades is for India for sure. Okay. Coming two decades is for India for sure. Right. So if you are basically, um, you know, planning to uh, make your career in the technical vertical, okay, it, it can be any any technical field, okay, it can be uh, your own core domain like mechanical or civil or uh, circuit branch, whatever domain you belongs to, plethora of opportunities are going to come up. Secondly, if you want to switch from your core domain to IT side, right, full stack web development, where you are des designing the website, coming up with the uh, mobile applications and whatnot again a big market right then data science domain right if you want to basically go into data science machine learning right deep learning big data cloud computing etc big market again right cyber security right so if whatever you are seeing today right everything is going to have a lot of opportunities just the thing is you have to choose what is your cup of tea and you have to basically <coughs> Invest your time, money, energy in upskilling yourself uh, with that, uh, you know, uh, do for that domain so that over a period of time, you are able to grab those kind of opportunities and, and you are basically up to date with the market. Okay. So uh, with, the, with that, you know, uh, this is a summary what we discussed, right? Like you guys go and read about what is China plus one. What is PLI? What is Gati Shakti plan? And what is EV revolution? Right? You can basically uh, go through uh, these four things alone after this session, and that will be super useful, important for every one of you. Okay. So, so with that, uh, you know what we will do is I'll stop sharing my screen for now, and a um, couple of questions. You know, I can basically uh, see here. Uh, right. Um, I hey Ari. Uh, 
I think, uh, uh, you know, we have not uh, gotten any question as of now. So what you can do is, um, I think you have some other commitments. So feel free to drop off. Um, uh, you know, if any questions are coming up, then I'll definitely let you know. Yeah. Great. So with that, uh, I will quickly share my screen to uh, show you two more things and then we'll just wrap up. So, but make sure you're reading about these, uh, uh, what do you say, initiatives. Okay.